Uh, first is from Tad J. The subject is Mark Journalist. Hey, K100 crew. Tad from H-Town. Long-time listener and fan of the show. I listen to K100 talks about wrestling journalists, and you all are spot on. Big time. I think. What's all that noise? We got noise. Wait a minute. That's my dog. Just going at his dog, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. I muted it. All right. Uh, I listen to your K100 talks about wrestling journalists, and you all are spot on, big time. I think of the world of PC snowflakery. I'm surprised they aren't hit with multiple lawsuits or, or issues pertaining to incorrect reporting. Meltzer, who everyone says is the best of all time, to be quite honest, he's very biased and out of touch with today's wrestling. Wade Kellen and all the other goons are embarrassing to even listen to or read anything they write or post. Sap is on another level of embarrassment all his own. Keyword, Sap. I followed Nick Hausman's articles, and Jason Powell is good too, but for the most part, the entire wrestling journal industry, if you call it that, is an embarrassment. Can we all just watch the shows and try to enjoy? Or how about now watching it if you don't? Kind of like if you don't like Billy, then fast forward. The question is, when do you all think wrestling news transitioned to the realm it is now from what it used to be? They keep kicking ass, and that's Tad from H-Town. Uh, all of media changed years ago. When, when narrative-driven uh, content for clicks became the, the norm. You know, and, they, and we just see it in professional wrestling where, you know, the, the, the problem I have with, with professional wrestling is when these guys get editorial privilege, okay, and they start talking about the work and stuff, and, thing, and they've never done it before, right? And when you start getting, like, you, you start trampling on our level of expertise, and you kind of indoctrinate your listeners into thinking that because you they think you know what you're talking about, that now these fans think they know more than the wrestlers. And they attack them online and stuff, and they, you know, they, and they try to explain to us things that like, like, like we don't know what's going on. And, and then that's the, that, that's the atmosphere that, that I have the most issue with is when, you know, and that, and that, that it's created this, this new hyper smart Mark that thinks that like, they know that, that they know everything about this business because they listen to the, because they, they listen to the dirt sheet guys. It's a really fascinating flex. If, if you think about it, you know, what, what, what's your take? Yeah, I don't. I think one of the questions was when did this start? I don't know. Joe might know better than me, but I think Se maybe seven, eight years I, ago, probably two thousand ten, something like that. Yeah, like I was gonna say ago, yeah. like I was. I'm surprised there's such a uh, a large market for it because when you think about it, it was just Dave and Keller and and PW Insider One Wrestling guys for a long time. And uh, but about well, you know when Ryan Satin started Pro Wrestling Sheet, I remember thinking, well, that's never going to work. There's no room for another wrestling site, and I of course turned out to be wrong. And then SAP came along, and then some of these Wrestle Zone and Wrestling Inc. guys have their own personalities and followers and stuff. So when you think about it, there's probably what 15 to 20 different, you know. Well, the thing is, there, there's now. there's no quality control. Anybody can be a wrestler. Before no, it, it was very hard to get into the business when me and Disco broke in. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody can be a podcaster. Anybody can be a commentator. Anybody can be a valet. There's no quality control. And mm -hmm. so these people who have no journalism or ethics and it's all clickbait, you know, they don't care because they're a reflection of society. That's what newspapers have become, you know, and nobody's held to, to high standards anymore, you know, and, and not to get political, but, you know, when did we ever think, like him or hate him, but, you know, Trump, when did we ever think we'd have a president that didn't read, who didn't give up, who was so divisive? But, it, right. and, you know, like the other day when they were doing the Biden thing, it looked like, the, you know, a few years we're going to look like the British Parliament. You know how they're doing cat calls and yeah. they won't even let the person talk. This yep. chick, Marjorie, whatever, is like, liar. And yeah. this Ooh. other guy, you know, yeah. It's like, and then they won't get up and clap, and they're all, you know, politically posturing. Yeah, but yeah. time, time out. Nancy Pelosi ripped the speech up right before. Yeah, that's, all right, that's she's wrong right. too. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said she's wrong too, bro. I, th I thought you make it understand. Sound like yeah. I am not a Democrat or Republican. I hate right. them both. You know, right. but I'm just saying, yeah, Pelosi should. You know, that was disrespectful. You know, and she was flexing there. Yeah. And so, you know, you even saw McCarthy trying to shush them. You know, he's got no real power. You know, but it's what it is. We become a more aggressive, disrespectful society in general. And it's a reflection of, you know what I'm you, saying? You see these, you see these clips in school too, where there's like, there's a rise in students fighting teachers. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, like shooting you know, them, shooting yeah. cops before nobody shot a cop. Nobody right. shot a yeah. cop. Now cops are afraid to go to a car because they're going to get shot. 
Yeah. You know, the world is just upside down. It's different from what we grew up in. It's yeah. normal to, you know, the Gen Z people maybe, but for us, it's like really weird. It you is, know, yeah. everything from the trans stuff to, you know, just how aggressive and disrespectful people are. And, and you got all these young guys that they come on here and they got lazy excuses like, oh, Disco and Conan and fill in the blank, Eric Bischoff or Mark Madden or whoever right. it is. They're just trying to be relevant. No, we're not. No, we're not. We did something in the business. We are relevant. Right. You're irrelevant. Right. You're trying to make us irrelevant with those lazy excuses. And it's, then you've got people that they're just putting clickbait out there and they're being irresponsible. But that's the world we live in. You know, I accept it and I understand it. I don't really complain about it anymore because it is what it is and nobody's going to change it, you know. But, we, okay, go ahead. All right. Well, yes. Uh, next is from Anthony Hunt. Some just question for Conan. Uh, K100 crew, greetings, guys. Mad props for Conan and Disco. If you guys are, this, uh, this is for you, Joe. If you guys are ever in Philly, Tony Luke's broccoli Rob is the best. Whatever uh, that means. What have, that? You been to Tony, have you been to Tony Luke's? Yeah. It's uh, right around the corner from 23. Rub. I don't like broccoli, Rob. So, no, I have what not. Is, what is broccoli, What is Rob? it? It's you put it on a, a roast pork sandwich. It's just, it's like broccoli and uh, like the juice. And it's like long on broccoli, a, a, skinny on broccoli. On a sandwich? Yeah, on, on a roast pork. Broccoli juice? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Is it the actual broccoli or just the broccoli juice? It's like, they, it's broccoli, but they cut it really thin and the stems and stuff like that. Right. It's not, not so, like, uh, I know, it's like Why does everything but, that comes out of Philly look and sound gross? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so there's here's more. My question is: There's a mass wrestler in NXT called Axiom. Do you guys think Ooh. he'd be successful? In the, uh, we don't know who he is. Anthony, we'll, we'll circle back on this next week. We, we don't watch NXT, but I'll watch a clip of this guy and like see 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 what's up. But uh, circle back on that one. He puts up P.S. Philly loves K100. Oh, I don't know if that, I don't that's know if true. It's a, yeah, I don't know that's if it's a badge of honor though. I don't like mm. the Philly fans. Um, next is a Rich Wah, and the subject is old school promo. It's from Rich, from Rich the Tin Knocker. There's broccoli have, Rob on a on a pork sandwich. Dude. Let me see that. Let me see. Broccoli Rob on a pork. Ugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that doesn't look appetizing. No. Just like that other thing you sent me that looked like a cheese vomit the pizza steak. Me. That was. Uh, what's up, guys? I know Conan Disco, Disco and Conan argue from time to time, but it'd be possible to hear two guys cut a wrestling promo on each other like you were at an angle for old time's sake. Yeah. Thanks. Sent Absolutely from my not. Uh, Absolutely. Rich, Rich, whatever. You, what's his name? Rich Waugh. You must be new to the show. We don't take suggestions. Right. Unless you want to mail uh, suggestions for K100 Talks. Mm -hmm. um, next is from subject is runner on base. Uh, the next from Wooven. Uh, subject is runner on base. And what's up, K1, K crew? I really love the addition of the sports show and I have a sports related question for you all. MLB recently announced that the rule is here to stay. A runner will be rewarded second base and extra innings. A reason for this is MLB's attempt to speed up the game. Personally, I believe bases should be earned, not given. I absolutely hate this rule. Just what are your thoughts on this? Also, how do you see this strategically changing the game? And that's much love from Mark Rosales. Um, it, it really does nothing. It just it just uh, puts more pressure on on on, on relief pitchers. You know, it just shows that you need a really you 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 like it's it's making relief pitchers that much more important, and it does speed up the game. You know, it's it actually makes it so it actually. Makes it kind of like interesting sometimes. It's like sometimes the games do go long, right? Even mm -hmm. with the like, there was a game that went like nine, 18, 19 innings. The Dodgers, and they had the runner on second base for like all these straight innings. But like, it's it's entertaining when a team can score like two runs, and the other team gets like, and like they come back, you know, like in the in extra innings. So 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 it's, it makes the end of the game kind of far more interesting than it used to be. All right. Um, what do you think about that, Kona? <sighs> Yeah, I agree with everything Disco said. Really? The only thing, that's why I didn't say anything, but the yeah. only thing that I would add to it is they need to make more rules and make the game quicker because, you know, it, it just takes way too long. Well, not, well, let's be honest. Does baseball really need to be nine innings? No. Just oh, like God. boxing. Yeah, Does I mean, boxing need to be 12 innings, I, I, 12 rounds? I always right. think just have a seven-round match. You right. know, just have a, like go or fight five for half rounds. hour, fight, fight for, for a half hour the most, you know, hey, bro. I was reading yeah. this thing. Yeah, this is a shoot. What I'm, a, what I'm about to tell you, 
Bro, they used to box and wrestle back in the day. Now, can you imagine sitting there and watching this for like two hours? Oh, two hours, yeah. Yeah, the yeah, big main it. event fights back then were 15 rounds boxing. Yeah. How? No, no, no. But no, no, two hours. Yeah, they, were lost. They, they, they go to knockout. This is before the 15 yeah. rounds. Oh, this okay. Before 15 rounds. Like Marciano, were... Joe Lewis days and all that. No, no, no. Before, before that. that. Oh, before Way that. before okay. that. Like bare knuckle yeah. fighting, you know, like two hours wrestling, like the Joe Stecker area, Stetcher, mm. you know, the 30s, the 20s. They were out there. Imagine sitting there for two hours, one right. match. Yeah. But that Next just shows how. That kind of shows back then there was probably not a lot going on because there weren't shopping centers and shit like that. All you did was maybe have books or, you know, Radio. you didn't have maybe, you know what I'm saying? So life was you had a lot more time. And you'd sit down and enjoy it. as life got more hectic. Your your attention span got shorter. Next is from JL of Mississippi. Questions and a thought. I've heard you guys mention one wrestling here and there. Did you guys ever read the message boards? I'm still friends with a lot of posters there. Have you ever thought about how good the Bloodline storyline is because of writing versus because of the performers doing so well with the material? Is it a 50-50 split or do you give more credit to one over the other? Thought, how long is it going to take everyone to realize that Polly just tweaked the Raven Sandman story and used it for the Bloodline story? That's regards from Fat Sexy. I have no um, idea what that means because the Raven Sandman story was Raven stole Sandman's kid and right. they fought over that. Like, what does it have to do with yeah, the bloodline? That's, that's, that's absurd. Maybe he uh, meant Raven Dreamer or something. No, it's definitely a combination. 50 50. The guys are, they've got some of their best actors all performing with each other on a weekly basis. You know, the blood of bro, the, nobody really realized how, how good Jimmy and Jay are, are acting, like their facial expressions. Bro, the, the best part of these things is like, you know, you watch everybody's reaction when something happens, like Paul's face, like when I, when they did that, when they did that spot. Like if you look at the thing when um, watch everybody's facial expressions when when Jay Uso cut that promo and Sammy says, "I don't give a damn what the tribal chiefs say," right? You see, look at Paul's face, Sammy's face, it. Roman's face, Jay's face, and of course Solo is perfect too because he just sits there and no sells everything, right. right? So and then Jimmy right. is like sitting in the corner, like with his head the head in his hands, like what about you? Know, just everybody's. Bro, that, that just shows you how important we – I've said – how many times have I said this? That the level – the skill of acting is like the most important skill be above work. You know, because so many guys have sold angles with really good acting to get you to buy a ticket, and they don't really care how good of a worker you are. You know, Hogan was a good actor in these in, in stuff and things. You, you know, Piper was a good actor. You know, like, like well, bro, those guys, the guys that drew money could act. Savage, you know, Heenan. This is exactly what we're seeing. Acting skills is sports entertainment. You know, we're in this realm of people like, well, there's the matches and how good the matches. No, you need to draw people to watch the matches. And then the WWE is doing the blueprint now of how to do it. Good acting, good storylines, you know, so that that grabs viewers. You know? I agree with everything you said. And I would just add this. I had this this conversation with the locker room in Mexico on Saturday where I was saying there's a lot of great wrestlers out there. There was a lot of great wrestlers in this room. But how many of you have connected with the audience? I'd rather have somebody that connects with the audience you know, than somebody that can wrestle good. Um, and the and what you were saying is 50-50. You're absolutely right. Because how many times have you seen a movie that was really good, but the acting wasn't good or, and vice versa? So the the movie, ha the script has to be good. The writing has to be good. And then you got to find the right person to interpret that. And that's what makes a great, you know what I'm saying? Relationship yeah. there, yeah. 